the rise of the warrior cop. So what do you mean, warrior cop? They're armed like soldiers, they're dressed like soldiers, they're trained in military tactics. Uh, and they have equipment like Humvees. Humvees, uh, tanks, uh, helicopters, uh, sort of battle uh, grade uh, guns. And you know, for a long time, that the SWAT teams were reserved for emergency type situations where you have, if you think like an escaped fugitive or uh, an active shooter or a hostage taking situation. You want to go in with a lot of power to put out the problem. Right, you have lives at stake. I don't think anybody is opposed to using SWAT teams in those sorts of scenarios. The problem is how they're overwhelmingly used today uh, is in a way that creates violence and confrontation where there wasn't any before. When you break into somebody's home, uh, send armed men into somebody's home at night, uh, you are creating confrontation and you're putting, you're, you're listening a very primal response in people. Uh, so I would argue that you know when drug dealers shoot back at cops in these situations, it's because they think they're being robbed by another drug dealer. When the federal government starts sending SWAT teams into these medical marijuana dispensaries. These were businesses. They were they have business licenses. They're operating under state law. You know, the, the, the hippie mom and pop couple that run the pot dispensary are not going to kill a bunch of federal agents. Um, using this kind of force against these clinics was about sending a political message. It was about making an example of these people because they were flouting federal law. And when the government starts using violence to make a political statement, uh, you know, I think we need to have a serious discussion about whether that's an appropriate uh, tactic in a, in a free society. And they're using SWAT teams to raid poker games, bars where there's underage drinking, barber shops. We're now we're seeing mission creep with SWAT teams. They're moving beyond the drug war. Even regulatory inspections are now can, are in a lot of areas conducted with SWAT teams. There was a, a group of Tibetan monks who were in the U.S. on a peace mission and overstayed their visas uh, who were then confronted with a SWAT team. Uh, I mean, it's almost beyond parody. When this started in the 70s, there were 300 raids a year. Yes, this used to be the last resort, right? The last thing you did when you had, when, when no other uh, uh, approach would work. Uh, now we're increasingly see it, seeing it as the first resort that police use, this kind of force. As of 2005, 50,000 SWAT raids per year, or 100 to 150 per day. Let's look at one example where we have videotape. In Arizona, Jose Guerrero, a Marine who served two tours in Iraq, was asleep in his bed. He awoke to the sound of his wife, Vanessa, screaming. After telling his wife and youngest son to hide in the closet, Guerrero grabbed his military weapon and walked out to the hallway. Police, who were conducting a drug raid, shot 71 bullets and hit Garena, who had never disengaged his safety, 22 times. As he lay on the floor, bleeding, Vanessa called 911. Paramedics then came, but the police wouldn't allow them to treat her husband for more than an hour. The police said they had to secure the scene, and in that time, the Marine bled to death. So, this can't this has to be a very extreme example. In my research for the book, I found over 50 cases where a completely innocent person was killed in one of these raids. Even after this raid happened, the, uh, the police department admitted that if he had survived, they, they didn't find anything they could arrest him for. They found no evidence of a, of a crime, uh, you know, when they searched this the house. This, too, was a drug charge, and they didn't find any evidence of drug dealing in the house. It, it appears that Guarena's crime was basically being related to someone who was involved in a criminal enterprise. Uh, another example, this one from Missouri. Again, it's a SWAT team that got a tip about drug dealing. Drug raids like this one happen in America more than a hundred times every day. On this raid, a SWAT team broke into this family's house, shot their dog. <laughs> Once inside, they didn't find any drugs. The owner was just charged with possessing drug paraphernalia.
the interesting thing, John, is, I mean, when this raid went viral on the Internet a couple years ago, people were outraged. I mean, people sent angry hate mail to this police department. And the thing is, there's nothing unusual about that raid. That was not a botched or bungled raid. That raid went as exactly as it was supposed to go. Uh, everything from the shooting of the dogs to, you know, the fact that there was a child inside they didn't know about, that they used the battering ram. Uh, the only thing really unusual about that raid was that it was actually recorded and, and posted online. In 2011, Arizona Sheriff's Office used two armored vehicles and a SWAT team to raid the home of a cockfighting suspect. Right. And in that raid, Steven Seagal, the action hero, now reality TV star, uh, had been signed up as a deputy with the Maricopa Sh uh, County Sheriff's Department. And so there were actually TV cameras following, and he actually drove uh, a tank into this poor guy's living room. I think we have some video of Steven Seagal being there talking about that. We have a uh, team that's a SWAT team, and my SWAT team rolled out today on this, and so when they roll out, uh, I rolled out. His SWAT team? Well, and this tank, I mean, this was a tank, uh, and they got it from the Pentagon through this program. This was designed for use in battle, and it, you know, it, it shoots 50 caliber ammunition, which is, you know, even the military has restrictions on that sort of ammunition, and they were using it, you know, in a cockfighting investigation. All right, we've heard your argument. Let's hear from the police. Russ Martin is a county sheriff in Ohio. Sheriff Martin, you have a SWAT team. You say it's a good thing. I, I, I do, John, and as you often say, that uh, when airplanes land safely, that's not news. But when tragedy happens, it becomes news. And Mr. Palco, although he does make some good points, there's a lot of this is anecdotal information. And I will tell you that day in and day out, law enforcement serves warrants provided by the judge, been vetted, probable cause, uh, safer because of these specialized tactical units. But for a drug raid or a cockfighting ring, why all the early morning knock your door down stuff? Well, I've been associated with 150 to 200 raids, and we've never used them for a gambling excursion. Uh, the great thing about law Drug raids, though, right? Yeah, absolutely drug raids. But again, we use a matrix that uh, provides for us the risk involved, whether or not the person's had a previous criminal history, whether or not there's guns involved, the, the value of the intelligence that we receive. So, uh, you know, frankly, I think it's a safer use of equipment. It's keeping law enforcement officers safer as a result of it. Bradley? Well, I mean, you're right that, that uh, very few of these raids end up uh, as a percentage-wise, with an innocent person dying, but these tactics used to be reserved for cases where you had somebody who had already committed an act of violence or was in the process of it. And you know, I, there's never really we've never really had a public debate or public discussion about whether this is an appropriate force to use against somebody who is suspected of a crime, hasn't even been charged yet. I, I will tell you that uh, law enforcement in America is one of the most difficult jobs. We are called to protect and keep the Constitution of the United States. Uh, we take serious our response. Um, I will also tell you that in a public forum, uh, our communities are asking us, how would we respond to a Columbine? How would we respond to well, a Well, the community a always situation? gets scared and, and overreact. But that's the great thing about policing and law enforcement in America is we are we're bound to the local control of our communities. And I'm going to tell you, when a local school board says, what would I do if there was a, a, a raid in our school, um, a Columbine type of situation, I can't stand up there and say, well, we really don't have a response for that. It's probably not going to happen. We don't have trained police officers. So I would tell you that uh, we're not militarizing our police. We're specializing our police. Community policing is strong and, and alive in this country. Well, a Bearcat armored vehicle isn't militarization? The last time? Absolutely, John. The last time I used a Bearcat was just four weeks ago. We had a husband who tracked his wife out in the drive shot and killed her, retreated into her house. We used a Bearcat to approach that house, announce our presence, try to establish contact through negotiations. That's a safe way to approach that house. I'm not sending fathers, mothers, brothers and sisters into these homes without them being prepared. But, but again, that, that's an emergency situation where somebody has proven that they are an immediate threat to somebody else's life. And that's that sort of response is appropriate is appropriate in that situation but when you're sending SWAT teams in to enforce drug warrants you're creating confrontation and you're creating violence where there wasn't any before and we might not disagree on that point I think uh, it's important that local law enforcement is held accountable for what they do and that's what law enforcement executives should be held accountable but they rarely are nobody gets fired but I'm conflicted about some of this because I hate cops who act like bullies but then when I watch these TV shows like Law and Order I root for the cops. Earl Talley! Earl!
Where were you at 10 in the morning? Come on, man. Who knows stuff like that? Now, later in the show, the show <laughs> reveals that that guy was not the bad guy. He was innocent. The cops, however, had searched his house without a warrant. But I, as a viewer, I was okay with that. I watch the show all the time, and they're running rush out over people. I should be saying, hey, is this constitutional? I'm a libertarian, but I don't. Well, you get a little bit of a rush watching that. And, and one of the interesting things I found in, in interviewing police officers who had been on SWAT raids for the book is they tended to, the, the adjectives they use to describe the feelings they get in these raids are very similar to the adjectives we use to describe the feelings you get from the drugs that they're conducting the raids for in the first place. The adrenaline. They say it's adrenaline, it's a rush, and it's intoxicating. Um, you know, the raids themselves can become habit forming. Well, one other twist on this. Uh, one defense we have against it is modern technology, like the cameras that we have in our phones. And it's odd because when people think of police state, they often think of the novel 1984, in which the government used millions of cameras, telescreens they were called in the novel, to watch people even in their bedrooms. And at the time, the pundits said, this coming technology is going to give government too much power. But it's turned out that these cameras give people, individuals, power. Just outside my office, a cop claimed a bicyclist rode into him on purpose. But then this video turned up and showed that the officer was the aggressor. That cop was eventually fired. Maybe video like this is why some don't want to be filmed. All I have is a camera. I'm clearly wearing nothing. I have no weapons. It does not matter. You know what? You're going to go to jail. I'm observing what they're doing and they're arresting me. I don't understand what's going on. The officer took her to jail and charged her with obstructing governmental administration. I did nothing. I did nothing. That was a woman who chose to tape a traffic stop outside her house. The charges against her were eventually dropped, but only after she was harassed by the police for making that video public.